Like and subscribe right now or this spider will crawl on your face while you're sleeping. Eating is one of those abilities that comes naturally, at least for everyone. It's a survival instinct anyway. That's why you can dig into your favorite dish whatever way you want and still be good to go. But for some foods, this is not always a good idea. These require specific criteria of devouring them, not just of their cultural origins, but to also enjoy their unique flavors and nutrients. You've probably encountered some of these foods and unknowingly chomped down on them the wrong way. Let's have a look at 10 of them in this video. Number 10. Ramen. Ramen has grown in global popularity for the past few years, mainly for college students like me. But as many more people would like to try out this Japanese dish, a lot may be holding back because they have no idea how to go about it. Well, there are no particular rules to enjoying a steaming bowl of ramen. You can dig in whatever way you want. Most people love to go in ravenously, but slowing down can be even more pivotal in enjoying this dish. It allows you to enjoy all the ingredients that went into preparing the dish and appreciate how they blend in with each other. According to Business Insider, a great starting point is to grab a few noodles from the bowl and lift them so that they're completely free from the others down there. Then shove them down your throat? Of course not. You have to dip them back into the soup so they're marinated enough for your enjoyment. From there, you can then proceed to eat them. And you don't have to keep up with noodles all through. There are other mouthfuls to enjoy. Mix things up by switching between the noodles, broth sips, and a bit of meat. And when you're done with these, raise the bowl and have one last mouthful of the delicious contents. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you'll get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number nine, pancakes. Here's a fun fact about pancakes. They were the earliest and most popular breakfast food during prehistoric times. Today, they vary in both shape and individual ingredients in the different cultures they're consumed. For instance, in the United States, pancakes are had mainly during breakfast, while in Britain, in its former colonies, they're eaten on the day before Ash Wednesday, Shrove Tuesday. To make the indulgence even more worthwhile, they can be accompanied by toppings depending on individual preference. Honey, peanut butter, jam, and syrup are some common options. Well, syrup is the more known option, so we'll focus on that. Here's a question for you. How do you apply syrup to your pancakes? Most people simply pour syrup right on top of their stack of pancakes and dig in. The result is that they end up with the top piece completely soaked while most of the middle pieces stay dry for a larger part. That doesn't sound inviting enough. You'll wish that at least every pancake is in contact with the syrup, but you'll be able to enjoy the intersection of these two different flavors. That's pretty simple to achieve. Just make a hole through your pancakes and pour the syrup right through. Simple, but effective. Number eight, strawberries. Strawberry lovers can attest to its sweetness and nice smell, but the fruit offers more than these superficial niceties. To anyone who eats strawberries, the fruits provide both vitamin C and vitamin B9, otherwise known as folate. Besides these two vitamins, the fruits are also a source of manganese and potassium minerals. But most people who eat these fruits make one mistake. They cut off the stem. This is perfectly in line because it's not that you're supposed to eat those, but by doing so, a good chunk of the fruit is lost. So how do you prevent this? Someone came up with an ingenious way of addressing the issue. Using just a straw, you can get rid of the greens and still retain the rest of your fruitful delights. You just push the straw from the bottom all the way through the top of the fruit and voila! Your full delicacy will be ready for munching. Number seven, tomatoes. Did you know that tomatoes were once thought to be poisonous? About 200 years ago in the United States, these fruits were a no-no. Probably because they fall under the nightshade family, a group whose members contain alkaloids and thus highly toxic. But now we know better and the tomato has become an iconic fruit gracing our salads and sandwiches with its unique taste. In fact, tomatoes today are among the top 10 most popular fresh market vegetables in the United States. And they do more than just offer flavor to different dishes. Tomatoes contain one important nutrient called lycopene. This compound is what gives the fruit the ability to ward off heart disease and cancer, some of the biggest health issues in the modern world. But to get to the lycopene, you need to make sure your tomatoes are cooked thoroughly. In addition to this important compound, cooking also increases the antitoxin content in the tomatoes. This can be pivotal in ridding your body of some toxic substances. 
so should you always cook your tomatoes? Far from it. They're still beneficial even when raw, but you can always mix things up to get the most out of this beloved fruit. Or is it a vegetable? Number six, dumplings. Dumplings are one of those dishes you'd find pretty much in every corner of the world, albeit under different names and varied preparation methods. For instance, the Japanese have dango and nikuman. In Ghana, they have banku, and the Chinese have xiaolongbao, otherwise known as soup dumplings. Naturally, each one of these versions of dumplings will have distinct ways of being eaten, but our focus in this video will be the Chinese ones, the soup dumplings. They're filled with pork in a meat broth, hence their name. During preparation, the dumplings are steamed, which turn the broth into a hot liquid. In Shanghai, China, where they are common, they provide just the perfect bite during the winter nights. But consuming them requires a certain degree of care. Try downing them when they're hot, and you'll most likely embarrass yourself. And eating them when they've cooled isn't a very good prospect, as broth inside would have solidified. Naturally, most people choose the suffrage route of trying to withstand the scalding, and it always ends up messy. So to avert this, you have to let out that soup first. There are two ways of going about this. Some restaurants provide big spoons, so once the dumpling is on the spoon, you can just puncture it by biting on the side. That way, the soup drains onto the spoon. Once it has cooled off a bit, you can proceed to sip it before devouring your dumpling. If the spoon is way smaller, you can bite off the top and allow it a few minutes to cool. Set the broth out of the casing again before tearing into your dumpling. Number five, kiwi fruit. Everyone who comes across a kiwi fruit will tell you peeling the skin off is a pretty big part of eating the fruit. And it can be one hell of a task, all the internet hacks notwithstanding. Most people end up with the pulp being part of the peels, which isn't something you'd want. Using a spoon is probably one of the easiest ways to go about it. In this method, you simply cut your fruit in half and slip the spoon between the skin and flesh of the other part. Lightly nudge the skin and turn the kiwi fruit until it completes a full rotation. Do the same with the other half and you're good to go. Alternatively, you can as well dig in without peeling off the skin first. That way, you get to take advantage of the abundant fiber and vitamin C available in the skin. Number four, broccoli. Broccoli lies under the same group with the likes of kale, brussels sprouts, cabbage, and cauliflower. All these veggies are just as important to our health, but for protein, broccoli has much higher content than most of them. Besides protein, broccoli is also abundant in vitamin K, iron, vitamin C, potassium, and fiber. But whether or not you get those nutrients is dependent on how you chow down your broccolis. Some eat them raw, others boil them, while the rest gently steam them. So which is the way to go? Ideally, all the three are just as appropriate, but if you're looking to get the most out of your dish, you're better off steaming these veggies. This is according to research conducted some time back. Well, admittedly, eating chunks of boiled broccoli can dumb down the mood around the whole thing. But knowing what's good for you, stepping back for some time before continuing is probably the best idea. Number three, garlic. Garlic originated from Siberia and for 5,000 years, it has graced our kitchens, adding that extra flavor in our favorite dishes. But as with most ingredients, garlic serves more than just enhancing flavor. It contains vitamin C, fiber, manganese, and vitamin B6. Besides these, it has a special compound known as Allicin, that plays a role in the prevention of cancer. It is this compound that calls for a different outlook on how you handle your garlic. How do you do it? Do you immediately throw it among the other ingredients once you're done chopping? If that's the case, you'll need to switch things up a bit. Allicin can only become effective if the garlic is allowed some time to be exposed to air. Most nutritional experts recommend at least 10 minutes of exposure to fully activate this enzyme. Now it's time for today's best pick. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber. So if you come across a photo online and want to know more details about it, just send it over to us. We might even feature it in a future video. Number two, Toblerone. Toblerone is among the most popular chocolate bars in the US, though it has its origins in Switzerland. The bar is distinctive for its shape that comprises several conjoined triangle prisms. Lots of people eat Toblerone their way. Some like to nibble away, others are more into biting off piece by piece while a few chuck it down whole. Well, there is certainly no problem with any of them. Most people choose to break off the triangular prisms by pulling individual triangles away from the rest of the bar. Again, this is perfectly fine, but there is a different and better way of going about it. 
instead of pulling a piece away, just push it towards the others and it will immediately break off. Yeah, nothing much complicated. Now you can proceed to enjoy your chocolate bar. Number one, sushi. Sushi is probably one of the most popular dishes around the world. It has managed to transcend its Japanese origins and land among some of the most revered modern world cuisines. Traditionally, the preparation is with medium grain white rice alongside some seafoods, with the most common being tuna, squid, salmon, yellowtail, and eel. In modern cooking, different types of rice are used, especially brown rice and short grain rice. Also, the other accompanying ingredients vary a great deal, except for the rice, of course, which is the heart of every sushi dish. Despite its popularity, a lot of people still have no idea that they're eating sushi the wrong way. They dip the pieces in soy sauce with the rice part down, just like they're served. We bet you've done this. This increases the likelihood of the rice falling apart, which isn't exactly a sight to behold. Next time you're at the sushi bar, make sure the fish part is down so that you're counted among the few dignitaries who know how to eat sushi right. And you don't always have to stick to chopsticks. Your fingers are also ideal, as long as they're clean.